Today on our 2010 Chevrolet Camaro, we're going to take a look at and also show you how to install the Draw Tight Sports Frame Trailer Hitch Receiver. This is a custom fit Class 1 hitch offering the inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter opening. Its part number is 24850. Alright, now here's our hitch when installed. As you can see, we're going to have our receiver tube opening and it's going to come out here. But aesthetically, that's really all we're adding to the rear of the vehicle. Our cross tube is going to remain hidden. It goes up to already existing attachment points just like up there in the front so no drilling or anything like that is going to be required this is a class one hitch so this gives us an inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter opening this hitch is really designed for small two bike racks small cargo carriers or small trailers we've got our safety chain connection point here this is a rolled steel style material then we're going to have a half inch diameter pinhole that's what we'll use to secure all of our accessories with. We want to be sure that we use a class one rated accessory. But as you can see here, it looks like we're going to have plenty of room to use just about any type of locking hitch pin, regular hitch pin, or anti-rattle device that we might choose. So when it comes to towing or, or hauling bike racks and things like that, we're limited to a 200 pound tongue weight rating. So that's the maximum downward force that we'll be able to put here at the receiver tube opening. And the hitch gives us a 2,000 pound gross trailer weight rating. It's going to be the total weight of our trailer and anything that we might load up on it. Now we do need to consult the owner's manual of the Camaro, we need to see what it's rated for and then we want to stay with whichever of those numbers are the lowest. Now a couple measurements that are going to be helpful in selecting your bike rack or hitch cargo carrier will be from the ground to the inside top edge of a receiver tube opening, we're going to have about 10 inches. Then from the center of our hitch pin hole to the outermost edge of our bumper, it's about eight and a quarter. Now we're going to take a quick look at our attachment points before we get the hitch put up in position. Basically what we're going to do is go directly up from the rear of the uh, kind of the tailpipe assembly here on each side. And right up here we're going to have a stud that comes through a weld nut. Now as we put our hitch into position we want it to fit over that weld nut. Now that attachment point is going to be in the exact same spot on each side. You can see it here on the passenger side as well. Then there's going to be an arm that comes off the hitch. And it's going to come right down here to where this transaxle in the rear meets this mount. There's a little oblong hole right there. And we've got our 3 8 bolt that will go through our hitch bracket into that and we'll tighten that down. Now as we raise our hitch up into position, we want to kind of get it started on one side and then rotate it around. We'll have to pull down on that fascia just a little bit to get it to slide past, just like that. And now, while one person holds it in position, the other person will get the hardware started. You'll see right here where that weld nut comes through the hitch, we wanna be sure that it sits all the way through that larger hole. We don't want it to be to where the plate of the hitch is actually resting on that nut. We want it to be in that larger hole. Then we're going to place on the smaller diameter flat washer and also thread on one of our flange lock nuts. All right, now it's time for us to snug our nut down just enough so it holds our hitch in position over that weld nut. We'll do that on both sides. Now here's our forward attachment point, or the attachment point closer to the front of the vehicle. We've got the oblong hole in the hitch, and then that small oblong hole here in the bracket that we discussed. Now you can see we've got three different length bolts here. We want to use the shortest of these that we can to pass through our hitch, and then also through that bracket. Now we've got a conical tooth washer that needs to be in place, you see just like that. So let's pass this through and see how close you can see. That spacing looks, looks like it'll be okay. Uh, once we start tightening it down, it's gonna move in a little bit, but we've got a little wiggle room. That's the shortest bolt. Happens to be the one I'm using, but your application may be a little different. Now we wanna grab some of the larger washers here and we want to try to take up that space. So that's a little bit loose. Now you may use some, you may use all of the washers. Getting some of our spacer washers put on. 
And then we want to thread on the larger of the lock nuts, this would be a 3 8 lock nut. As you can see, our bolt there, long enough to pass through the end of the nut, but we've still got a gap there before it meets that transaction. That should be exactly what we're looking for. Now we can look in the instructions. You want to find your torque specifications there, and it's time to go through and torque all of our fasteners down appropriately. Now with all of our hardware torqued down to specification, that's going to complete our installation of the draw tight sports frame class one trailer hitch receiver, part number 24850 on our 2010 Chevrolet Camaro. Click the link below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com.